<clears throat> this is very long overdue and I've promised this to several people but never followed through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bite the bullet and do this today. I'm gonna list out all of the canning supplies that I use that I recommend or that I don't recommend necessarily um, for a beginner who's canning. Um, I know that it can be extremely daunting thinking that there's tons of supplies, there's a huge investment, you don't wanna get into canning because you don't wanna spend all the money. Um, well, I'm here to tell you that it's not that bad. Of course, that is subjective, you know, not that bad to one person could be not eating for two weeks for another. So it is, invest it is an investment, you should definitely understand that. Um, but here is the supplies that I use personally um, and how I use them. So the first thing that you're gonna need is some sort of a canner. Now, I do practice Rebel canning. However, I don't water bath everything like a lot of Rebel canners do. I do pressure can and I prefer to pressure can over water bath canning. So I do have a pressure canner. Now, the canners that I use are um, Presto pressure canners. I have two. This is a 16 quart Presto pressure canner. I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace for $50. So buying these new, you can expect to spend anywhere between um, $115 to $200, depending on the kind that you get. I also have a 22 quart Presto canner. They both work really, really well. Now with the pressure canners, if you get them used, you wanna make sure that you get one that has um, a weight of some sort or a jiggler. The 15 pound jiggler is what came standard with the Presto. Now, depending on your elevation, you might not need 15 pounds. Now, what these jigglers do is they regulate the pressure in the canner. So, since I don't need 15 pounds of pressure to can, I bought these, which have removable weights, to regulate 10 pounds of pressure, which is all I need at my elevation. Now, with that being said, if you're confused about elevation and what pressure you need, one of the other things that I highly recommend getting is a canning book. Now, even though I don't follow all of Ball's guidelines, the ball book for canning is really, really good for just starting out. Um, it can be a little overwhelming because a lot of the methods in this book are um, more than just canning. It is just a preserving book, but they do have a thicker book that is more, I think, more set on canning, I do believe. But, but these are really, really good books. And then if you want to explore just water bath canning, Amish also have books. Every, all the recipes in this book are water bathed which means they only use boiling water methods. Um, but I do definitely recommend getting the ball book. They have a whole lot of technical information to kind of explain the process and how canning works. I know that was something that I was really confused about when I first started canning. I didn't understand it. It didn't make sense to me. It seemed just weird. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so with your canner, you need the weight. Um, a gauge isn't absolutely 100% necessary, especially if you have a jiggling weight because that is more reliable, but mine do have a gauge. They need some sort of a seal, and you have to have a rack. So even if you're only doing water bath canning, you need some sort of a rack so that your jars are not touching the bottom of the canner directly. Um, you That can cause the jars to break, it can call, cause explosions. So you have to have a rack, or you could use a rag, and I've even, I've even used lids, and I've like set my jars on top of the lids, but it's not very, sturdy so I would definitely recommend getting some sort of a rack but if you buy a canner they typically come with them anyway so the next obvious thing that you have to invest in are jars um, now regular canning jars are gonna come in two different types they're gonna come regular mouth or wide mouth and there's the difference now when you buy jars brand new you can reuse them. And now Ball and USDA, they don't suggest reusing the, the flats that come with the jars, but a lot of Rebel canners do as long as they're not damaged and as long as they have a complete seal and they're not dented or messed up in any way, a lot of us will reuse them successfully. Um, for example, I believe this lid has been used multiple times. So also, Another thing that a lot of people don't do unless you're a Rebel Canner is reusing commercial jars. So these are some peppers that I water bath canned and pickled in an old Tostito jar. And this is an old, uh, I think it's, this was pickled jalapenos that I purchased from the store and I'm gonna can in this too. My rule of thumb is that if it has a push top or a lug lid is what these are called and it has a rubber seal on the inside, I will try to reuse it. 
If it doesn't seal the first time I process it, I'll like somehow mark it so that I don't reuse it again. A lot of times if there's something damaged, I'll mark it with an X so that I won't try to process in that again. But commercial jars do work. Now, um, so you can reuse your jars, you can reuse your flats if you're willing, but if you're not willing to reuse your flats, you can buy them. So they have ball flats and then other brands have them too. These are country classic flats. So I don't know if these work. I've bought flats in lots of different brands. Um, a lot of people insist that ball sucks and that golden harvest is better, but I actually believe that I think they're all made by the same company. I'm not sure, but you can buy these and usually you can get a 12 pack of flats for um, four to six bucks depending on the brand, where you're shopping, and whether it's regular mouth or wide mouth. Wide mouth are better. Like, it's easier to shove the food into the wide mouth, it's easier to clean them, um, but they're more expensive. The jars are more expensive and the lids are more expensive. So, that is up to you, you know, on what you wanna do. Now, there are also reusable lid options. Um, these are, um, Tatler lids, There's, I think there's a few different brands that make reusable options. So instead of the metal flat, you've got the separate rubber seal and a plastic flat and they work with the, um, the metal lids that come with the jars, which these are obviously reusable too. Never buy these. Unless you're buying used jars that don't come with lids, you should never have to buy the rings. Um, because the ring, when you when you can, you're going to remove the rings from the jars. You only need these for the actual processing part. Um, don't buy these. You're going to be overwhelmed with the amount of. I throw these away half the time because I have them coming out of my ears and falling out of cabinets, like everywhere in my house. Don't buy rings. So with that being said, you can buy used jars. Um, but double check the jars and check around the rims and make sure they're not nicked and that there's no um, cuts or nicks or cracks anywhere in the jar because put under pressure or, or in the water bath, it can, the jar can break completely. Now, other things that you're going to need, you're going to need some sort of a can opener, if you're, especially if you're going to reuse the lids. So I like this can opener. This actually came with my Tatler lids. I believe, um, but you can buy these off of Amazon or even at the dollar store. So when you open the jars, you're just gonna place it under there and sometimes I'll put an old lid on top just to keep from bending the lid that's on there so that I can reuse it. Um, you can also use like just any sort of can opener, honestly. Um, sometimes I even use my fingers, my fingertips, but that tends to bend the lid and then I can't reuse them. So can openers are necessary. Um, now, two other necessary items well one absolutely is a jar lifter you use it like this by the way you hold this in and then you're going to reach into the canner to pull your jar out because these are going to be super 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 hot when you're done processing so you absolutely have to have a jar lifter get more than one if you can swing it but i've had this one for a little over a year another thing is a debubbler so this has two functions it is a debubbler on this end so you will use it to literally debubble. You'll push it around in your jar to get all the bubbles out. Also, there is a headspace um, ruler at the bottom of it. So depending on what sort of headspace you need, you will, so this is one inch of headspace, and then that's a half an inch of headspace. So depending on what you're doing, it's gonna call for a different amount of headspace. And this will help you, once you do it for a little while, you can eyeball it. You don't necessarily need to use this, but I would recommend getting one of these. Now, two items that I do not use but that I purchased this and this. Now, what are these? This is a magnet. So people use this to literally pull their lids up and stick it on their jars. I don't use this, it's useless to me. I don't boil my lids. I think that's why people typically would use these if they were to boil their lids because it would be hot. They would put it on their jars like that. I do not use this, this is useless. I've used it more to fish things out of small spaces if it was metal. I don't recommend these. I also don't recommend these. There's a lot of people who swear by using these to open their jars and I'm guessing they pop it off like this. I don't know, I've never been able to get that to work. Don't like this, don't like this, would never use them. Now, with that being said, two things that I do like and that I would recommend, well, is some sort of vacuum sealing option. 
So if you have a food saver, you can get a, um, you can get these to literally hook onto your food saver machine and it will actually vacuum your jars sealed. Now, this is not for just canning cooked food. You cannot just pour hot food in a jar and then seal the jar and then think that it's safe. You need to process your food. Rebel doesn't mean unsafe, still follow a process. What I use these for, and I have, I have a manual option, which it manual comes with it, and I also have an electric option. And this does wide mouth and, um, and regular mouth. I use those for dry goods. So this is corn flour that I put in a mason jar and I actually, so depending on which, there's a lid stuck in the pan. Well, well, what in the hell? Hang on. Okay, now that I got that out. All right, so if you have some sort of a dry good that you're wanting to preserve, sometimes I will seal up jars of candy, jars of flour, jars of sugar. Um, I've also water bathed some eggs and I've used these to seal those. Um, you will put the vacuum sealer on top and like with this one, it's a manual pump and you will literally vacuum the air. Pump. Or you can use the electric version. I do have links to both of these in my bio. Put it on and then hit the button and it vacuums the air out. But again, do not think that you can put cooked food in a jar and vacuum seal it shut and that it will be safe. That is not how it works. There is a whole process to canning. There are safety measures to follow, even if you're just rebel canning. You know, rebel doesn't mean you just do whatever you want. You have to actually follow some sort of science behind it. But these are the supplies I use. I, um, the things that I use every day, every time I can, literally this. I don't always use my debubbler because sometimes I dry can. If I'm dry canning, like with these potatoes, I didn't debubble. I didn't measure the headspace. Um, so now I will say you can buy, you can buy all of this stuff off Amazon. You can buy sets. You can go to farm stores. You can even get a lot of this stuff from Walmart. Um, just, I don't know. Um, just read up on it before you start doing it. Make sure you understand the science behind the process, especially if you're going to go into rebel canning because you want to have a good understanding of what you're doing before you do it so that you don't do something dangerous. Uh, I literally, I saw a post on a rebel canning page on Facebook tonight of a girl who was confused because the milk she canned curdled and she didn't understand why, but then she posted that she, the way she processed it was she put it in a water bath, let the water boil and then shut it off and let it cool. That is not how you can milk. Um, milk is canned in a, if you water bath it, I think that people say that you have to water bath it for at least an hour. I don't water bath milk. I only pressure pan milk. So basically she under processed her milk and it's, it's garbage now. So, um, don't just blindly go into rebel canning. You do need some supplies. It is an investment, but once you get past that initial purchase of the canner, the racks, the jar lifter and the jars and the lids, you recycle these things. I still have multiple packs of brand new jars and lids in my garage because I have been reusing jars, reusing lids as I'm using my canned goods. So it's, it's an investment, but it's an investment that's worth it. Um, I'm sure that I missed something in this video. If you can think of something else, if you have any questions, just leave a comment, let me know, um, and I'll try to address that for you. But those are the supplies that I use and that I recommend. Now I have to clean this up.